Welcome to Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton, where we equip pastors to take their churches from declining to thriving by pointing them to a new future and a new hope. Join us weekly for encouragement and practical advice in your pastoring journey. Welcome to Revitalize and Replant. I am Mark Clifton. Thank you, Dan, for the introduction. I'm here with Mark Halleck. Hey. And we are in Mark's church in Inglewood, Colorado. And oh, man, today we're going to talk about children. I love this. I have nine grandchildren. Isn't that cool? Do you have hey, nine? I have nine. Praise the Lord. How? What are the ages? Like uh, ballpark? 18. One of them will turn 18 in December. Okay, okay. And then the youngest is like six. Wow. It's so, so sweet. Oh, man. It is so awesome. awesome. And we love children. And so we're going to talk today about how a pastor can minister to children yeah. in a worship service. Now, listen, I love that. you may think, well, I don't need this. Hey, we all need this. Yes. You need this podcast. That's right. And maybe your pastor needs this podcast. Yep. Maybe you're a layperson or a deacon or whatever, you're listening to it. Yep. Send this to your pastor. If you're yep. a parent, send, yep. if you're a grandparent, send this one to your pastor. Because we're going to talk about seven things you can do as a pastor to minister kids in your worship service. And yeah. I'm not talking about having a children's message. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of children's messages. Yeah. Did you grow up why. with children's messages? No, I didn't. That's probably why I'm not a fan of them. Yeah. You know, also, I've seen them kind of degenerate sometime into silliness yeah. and not really focused on God yeah. and on. Uh, you know, I will say this, though. This is our podcast. We can say whatever we want, right? <laughs> so I have a friend of mine. I'm not going to give you his name, but if he hears this podcast, he'll know who he is. He was doing a children's message one time, and he was talking about how we try to cover up and hide our sin. And so he brought a can of air spray, right? So all the little kids are sitting up there in the circle. And basically, sometimes when you do the children's message, people are just sort of waiting for a kid to do something funny. Yeah. And again, that <laughs> kind of just disrupts the whole, to that's me, the whole, yeah. the whole worship service. It's not really what we're there for. So, you know, he took the, he took the can and he sprayed it. And he's going to talk about how we try to cover up our sin. He said, you know what this is? And this one little boy said, yeah, that's what my mama uses after she goes to the bathroom. Oh, so, no way. So, <laughs> of course, mommy was there, sure. right? Of course. Everybody yeah. Hears so, this. Yeah. how do you come back from that I know, and preach a I know, sermon? I know. Right. Hey, can I do this real quick? There, let me just throw out three reasons why this matters. Okay, okay. Go for it. Just really quick. One, because children are creating the image of God, and they have great value, and they matter in your church. And sometimes I think a lot of pastors sadly relegate and say, "Hey, listen, that's why you have a children's ministry director." And I would say to the pastor, "No, no, pastor, you're accountable to the Lord." according to Hebrews 13, 17, for every soul under your care from the nursery to the nursing home. Okay, let, let's let's talk about these three things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We may not have time to go more yeah, than yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Let's, let's kind of yeah. do a, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's call an audible right here on this live podcast. Yeah. And let's talk about the three things you just talked about. And then we'll talk maybe in the next well, podcast about the seven. Okay. So well, number well, one. Well, here, yeah, I actually, that was just one. That was just well, one. go for it. What well, is one. it? Well, here, here's what I would just say, is kids matter. Kids matter. Kids are, they have great value theologically. In the, they're made in the image of God. They've been entrusted to the care of the church. And as churches, and as pastors specifically, we are responsible to shepherd these little lambs, these little sheep. We're, we're called to shepherd their parents. We're also called to shepherd, obviously, them as well. And what I've just seen is a lot of times there's this divide between pastors. And I think there's different reasons for this. Sometimes pastors are just, they don't know what to do with little kids. You know, they just don't know. They, they, for whatever reason, they're not very uh, comfortable around little kids. I would say, listen, kids can pick up, man, whether you love them or not. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, they and can. They can. They know. They can tell. They, they can, can tell if my pastor loves me. Yep. You know, and here's how you know. If little kids want to give you hugs on Sunday, you're probably oh. giving off a vibe that, man, you love them like Jesus loves yeah. you. And if kids steer clear from you, yes. it's just the opposite. Oh, man, and you don't want to be that. You don't want to be that guy. You just don't want to be that guy. That is so true. You know, a second thing is this, though. In worship in particular, the, we are raising the next generation of believers. Mm-hmm. And it's and you and I both share this conviction of of they need to experience intergenerational worship. They need to understand they are as much part of the body and corporate worship as mommy and daddy are. Right. Right. Um, it concerns me when we see church models where kids literally can grow up an entire their all their children years, children's ministry years, middle school, high school, and never be in corporate worship right. with the rest of the body. And so that's huge. And then the third thing I just was going to say is this. Every young family, if you're in a dying church, one of the biggest challenges is we've got to reach young families. We have to do that. 
Well, what I can tell you is how you, Pastor, <laughs> love and care for and treat kiddos when they walk through that door is going to speak volumes to those parents. It's going to speak volumes to those parents. So you just wrote a book. Yeah, we just wrote a book. I wrote a book with my good buddy, Frank Trimble, and we talk about a lot of this stuff. And, and the it's name called, of the book? It's called Every Kid Matters. Every right. Kid Matters. And the subtitle has to do with how do we shepherd the next generation? And it's specifically, I think it applies to all size churches, but it specifically targets smaller to normative sized churches where you don't have a lot of big kids programs, right? You know, you can't pull off a lot of the stuff that the big church down the street does. And I would say that's just fine. In fact, they're incredible strengths to being a smaller church, but as a pastor in particular, and I would say church leaders across the board, you have to have a vision and a passion for kids in your church. And that's kind of bringing us back to what we're talking about. Yeah, it is. In terms of, of uh, children, the, the place that they have in the church. But, right. But I do think it's something, I mean, listen, I mean, how often have you heard, or like even in seminary, you're not getting much on how to pastor children. No, you're not. And as I'm sitting here thinking about it, some of the, some of the pastors that do the best at what we would call church growth yeah. are pastors who love kids and kids love them. Mm, yeah. In fact, one, one of the uh, – Chris Williams is a pastor of, uh, of uh, Fellowship of Greenwood in Missouri. That church has grown to – I mean, God's done an amazing thing. Over a 1,000 people from, from – you know, it was a replant. Mm. It was just a handful. Yeah. Chris was a children's pastor before mm. he became the senior pastor. Wow. And and, and that, that love of kids is evident yeah. in everything he does. Yeah. I mean, my one of my grandsons was 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 converted at his church and I got to baptize him. And and yeah, and Chris just loves kids. Mm. And I, I just now thought about that. You know, my my grandkids love Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, a yeah. senior pastor yeah. and they just love to be around him. Yeah. And again, man, if, if kids don't like hanging around with you, they yeah. liked hanging around Jesus. Yeah, yeah that's right. They wanted to come that's around right. him. That's right. And Jesus loved hanging around and him. And so, yeah, that's a really good point. Well, when you keep kids at the forefront of your mind, let me just say this. Yeah. It will affect how you see everything in your church, how you do evangelism ministry, how you do discipleship ministry, worship ministry. Our next the five to 10 years, what do we want to see happen? If you don't love kids and you're not thinking about kids and their role in all that, uh, you're, you are way too short-sighted. Okay, in your well, listen, we're going to do this podcast on the seven yeah. uh, ways to deal with kids in worship next week. Okay. So if you tuned in for this week, okay. hey, hang on, 48 hours from now, it'll come, because I got something else I want to I love it. I want to talk it. about I love here. it. I, I, I do believe that I was yesterday, I was in a church building that's getting anybody to be replanted. They're getting ready to be adopted by another church. They've been adopted. It just hasn't hasn't happened yet. And as I was in that building, it was two stories of education space. And the lower story was all preschool, built in the 1980s. So it's relatively new buildings. Mm, okay. There was a room for bed babies, toddlers and creepers, uh, two-year-olds, and then three-year-olds, and then four- and five-year-olds. And each of these rooms had restrooms in them, and they all had equipment in them. But they hadn't been used in years. Mm. Not a single child had been in these rooms in years and it looked like it mm. and then it went up to the second floor and you had first grade every room was different first grade second grade third grade fourth grade fifth grade so at some point there were kids everywhere but not a single child had been in those rooms mm. completely vacant oh wow okay and i'm thinking at what point does it become okay so to speak mm -hmm. for us to go to church every sunday morning and the entire children's building is vacant mm. that is not okay mm -hmm. unless you are in sun city <laughs> arizona yeah, yeah, yeah. surrounded by ten thousand <laughs> senior adults but you're not you're yeah. in a neighborhood full of kids all yeah. right and and i think we just have to our heart has to be broken over that and I've said before, move your prayer meeting from the worship center to the preschool room where mm. kids used to meet and have your prayer meeting in there and ask God to break you Amen. And, and, and give you the passion to see children come back Amen. again. Amen. And we could do all yeah. episode on what you could do to connect and, and reach yeah. children. But man, just at least don't accept it as normal. No, I know. That's where it begins. Yeah. That's it's not where it being begins. okay with it. Okay. And then let me tell you this other, the reason yeah. children matter so yeah. much Every child matter who comes into your church. Every child yeah. matters who yeah. comes into your church. So here we have this. We have a small church in Linwood of, uh, of 40, 50 people at this time. And uh, 
thanks be to God, we got a young man who's come to know Jesus, and he's sharing Christ with people like crazy. And so he brings this this kid who's got some major problems in his life, and we're sharing Jesus with him. And pretty soon, the kid brings a girlfriend who's got major problems in her life, and she brings a son with her, and her son is autistic, and he's hard to control. Mm. So here we are in this in our worship center, and her son is really out of control. He's he's making a lot of noise, and he's running around, and and I can tell she's very embarrassed. Obviously, this mother is, and the yeah. boyfriend is, and and uh, and everything. Wonderfully, our people don't make any issue out of it all. Mm. But my my wife uh, has some experience with some autistic children, and uh, she so graciously went and, and got this boy and took him to our children's area. He was about four years old Mm. and was able to just, because she understood him and he understood her, she was able to love on him and to care for him Mm. and to communicate to him. And he understood that when he came to church, this was a place where he was accepted and loved, and it was a safe place. And it was wonderful to see that happen. I love that. Well... This boy and his mother lived in the inner city part of Kansas City. And um, anyway, through the way things are, you know, the boyfriend and her broke up, and we lost track with all of them and couldn't find them anymore. And that was a year or more ago. And then we're watching the news last week in Kansas City, and there was a little boy who fell out of a 17-story window in his apartment mm. to his death. Well, that's tragic and awful and terrible. I go to church the next morning, and our pastor, Howie, says, that was that was Grayson. Oh. And of course, my wife and I are there. My wife's just crushed. Oh, my this word. beautiful little boy. Yeah. And, and even yet, as we do this podcast, the, the authorities don't know how that happened, if it was foul play or if mm. he just fell. or mm. uh, it, But, you know, but... Th- we do know that when Grayson was with us in our church, he was loved and cared for. Yeah. He wasn't ignored. Yeah. We didn't push him to the side. We didn't just put him in a corner someplace and try to keep him quiet. We loved him. You never know mm. that four-year-old kid with autism who comes to your church, that three-year-old special needs kid, yeah. that, 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 that teenager who comes and they're all— you know, act like they'd rather be doing a root canal than be in your church. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's going to happen to them next week. Yeah. Every child matters. Amen. And that we're just a little old rural country church. Who would have thought we would ever encounter yeah. that? But God brought that young boy to us. And I'm convinced he discovered something about God in his yeah. own way that he yeah. could in his mentality, uh, in the way that we loved on him and cared for him. And um, you just incredible. never know. Oh my so gosh. guys and ladies, wow. love every child in your church. Yeah. Because every child matters. Amen. And then join us next week. We're going to talk about seven ways you can do that in worship service. Yeah, all right? We'll get real practical next All right, week. guys. Check us out at churchreplanters.com, and please subscribe to this podcast. Thanks for joining us today on Revitalize and Replant. This podcast is brought to you by the North American Mission Board, where we help dying or struggling churches regain health for the glory of God and the good of their communities. If you found this conversation helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. To learn more about becoming a replanting pastor or to explore resources about revitalization for your own church, visit churchreplanters.com.